after day, they told her the disturbing details of their deranged crimes. And now we're learning about the secrets shared by some of California's most notorious serial killers. Tonight in a CBS 2 News exclusive, she tells Stacey Butler how she coped as the state's top serial killer counts. We will look into all the aspects of the freeway murders. It was the Southland's darkest hour. Six of the 41 victims have not even been identified. They... Um, raped, took turns raping Christina, and then they injected her with Windex. The hillside stranglers, the trash bag murderers, the freeway killers, the sunset strangler, and the wonderland murderers stalked the streets of Los Angeles, preying on lost souls. One by one, they were arrested. All ended up at the L.A. County Men's Central Jail in one cell block. Vernon Butts, one of the freeway killers, had hung himself in the jail. And the district attorney and the deputies were mad as all get out. It was one woman's job to keep the rest of them alive. My job was to see all newsworthies that came through the jail and keep them from killing themselves. It was 1979 and Vonda Pelto's door was always open. My office was a converted cell. The trash bag, the freeway, the hillside, the sunset killers. They'd all use the phones and then they'd pop into my office. She was a young single mother working toward her license in psychology. It changed me. They were LA's most dangerous serial killers who needed to unload. I was having a very hard time coping with the killers and the horrible things they were telling me. One of the trash bag murderers told her how his partner in crime chopped up a husband and a wife. Ellie told me that he could hear the bones breaking. I went and threw up. And the handsome hillside strangler was always at her door. And Ken would come and lean on my door and say, oh doc, how you doing today? You got some time for coffee? And I'd say, sure, Ken, come on in. Had I met Ken Bianchi in a bar, I would have gone out with him. The trash bag killer and the hillside strangler would hold debates in her office. Ken was arguing that nice women didn't wear tight jeans or makeup. And Ellie was saying, yes, they, they look good in tight jeans and low tops and makeup. And Ken said, well, I wouldn't date any woman who dressed or looked like that. That's, that's not appropriate for a lady. Now, Dr. Pelto, see, she dresses like a lady. <laughs> Vonda remembers porn star John Holmes, implicated in the Wonderland murders. He would collect uh, cockroaches and mice because he was lonely and he would have these pets. One day, she walked in on him during a strip search. And I thought, now, Vonda, a nice girl wouldn't go out there. I'm not a nice girl anymore. I've been in the jail three years, and all of my good Southern Baptist polish is gone. John suited up. He came into the little room that I interviewed, and he said, you know, Doc, he said, any time you want to, you know, want a little, he'd really like to come out for a little ride. Even Manson was in the same cell block. He didn't like onions. His favorite food was chicken. Vonda took this photo on his bed days after he left. He could not believe how much he could get his followers to do. The killers came to love her. They wrote her thank you notes and Christmas cards, even letters long after she left. At times, she forgot she was dealing with the criminally insane. I was so naive. Until one Halloween. We went first to the Sunset Killers. Cell. When Vonda dressed up and gave candy to the inmates. He was the one who chopped the heads off, kept them in his fridge, did sexual things with them later. It's a night she'll never forget. Would you like Hershey bar or uh, cigarettes? And Douglas went like this. <gasps> and I had this feeling he was envisioning my head on a plate. For years, she wanted to write a book, but fear always stopped her. Every time I started to write the book again, I would go back into the nightmares. But now, 25 years later, she's ready to tell her story.
Pelto's book, Without Remorse, is in stores now, and she's already working on her second book based on the detailed confession by one of the freeway killers. Live in the studio, I'm Stacy Butler. Paul, back to you. Thank you, Stacey.